Hi, I'm Chuck Marfione, and I'm a classical guitar maker. I also make uh, period-style romantic guitars here in this nice little compact shop. Uh, sitting here in North Carolina uh, on a hilltop looking at mountains, which you can't see at the moment. But in any event, let me show you around what we have in here. And, uh, you know, we can start by uh, just, you know, taking a look at all the different machines that are in the shop. Uh, you know, we're, you know, very uh, Laguna-centric, so to speak, here in the shop. Uh, uh, almost all the power tools are uh, Laguna, Laguna tools, and I love them. They're great tools. They've been very helpful. You know, we first we've got a 14-inch uh, bandsaw, and we also have a 10-inch uh, a fusion uh, table saw. And over here we've got a combo planer joiner, uh, 10 inch, which is more than adequate for the type of work that I do. If I was a furniture maker, I would probably want something a little bit uh, bigger than this. And over here is the CNC machine, which is my pride and joy. Uh, do a lot of work on this and uh, continuing to do more and uh, you know a little bit later on in this presentation we'll uh, show you uh, you know how it works and what we do on it. Although my build process is fairly machine uh, intensive I still do a lot of hand work and so I've got an area that's set up you know primarily for hand tools and a lot of the specialized tools that are uh, used by a, a luthier. You know, aside from what I've got on the walls here, I've got drawers and drawers, uh, you know, filled with very specialized tools, which I use uh, in the trade. It's a very small shop, uh, fairly well designed. I've uh, spent a lot of time trying to think how I can take a 16 by 24 space and, uh, and, and best utilize it. So the walls are loaded with, uh, you know, different uh, accoutrements of, of all sorts, you know, fixtures, jigs, tools, you know, racks, shelves. Uh, whatever, uh, you know, to help make my, make my job a bit easier. Well, there are a number of different approaches to building guitars. You know, some builders, you know, need to, to build by hand because they feel it's important for them to be in touch with the wood in order for them to build the, the really great guitar. You know, other builders, they tend to focus more on machineries and, and automation uh, because they're in a more of a, let's say, a production mode. I tend to be in the middle. I like to take advantage of all of the technology, but at the same time, I also, I too want to be in touch with, the, with, with, with my guitars, and that does occur when you're building by hand. So uh, it's been a healthy marriage between the technology and the tradition, and I'm very comfortable in that particular uh, position. Uh, this here is a, uh, a, a romantic guitar from you know maybe the early 19th century around 1840. It was inspired by uh, the uh, guitars of Rene Lacote. This particular instrument was totally handmade. I uh, did not use any uh, automation for this instrument at all. Hand carved, uh, hand everything is hand bent, uh, all the inlays, all the perflings, etc. Um, and I will continue to build like this in tandem with uh, my other uh, activities using all of my machinery. But uh, I just thought you'd like to see this in... What, is about, this? what does it sound like? Well, I imagine you might want to hear it. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll try to uh, play a tune on it. And of course, if there are any instructors out there that would like to uh, uh, offer me some lessons, I'll be more than happy to take them. <laughs> And this one down here is my concert classical guitar. This particular instrument is uh, you know, modeled after the 1912 Ramirez uh, that uh, Andres Segovia played. What I've done, though, is I've treated it a little bit differently cosmetically in terms of the rosette and the purflings. But the body size, the neck dimensions, uh, you know, the scale length, 
of the bridge, uh, the bridge size uh, and the bracing and all of the internal uh, mechanics here are uh, uh, you know, per plan uh, from, the, from that 1912 Ramirez. The CNC machine is an important part of my uh, overall build process and what I've had to do is develop a number of different hold down methodologies to safely uh, you know, keep these parts in place you know, during the machining processes. A majority of the work I'm doing is uh, held in place with uh, vacuum systems as opposed to either double sided tape or um, uh, mechanical clamps. I find this to be a very safe and effective way to do this uh, and you know I, it really uh, you know makes a lot of sense because essentially I don't have to worry about the tool dodging around you know, of physical clamps which is uh, you know really something to be concerned about. So what we have here is the table uh, which is the stock table that comes with an IQ and I've removed some of the some of the spoil boards which were a stock item and then what I started to do is uh, uh, actually make a whole bunch of, of positioning uh, holes here in the table which I worked out uh, with my uh, with my CAD program and these will make a lot more sense as we get into the uh, explanations of uh, some of the different hold down jigs I use but you know these are all predetermined and very accurately uh, you know actually bored into the table and then uh, 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 what I do is I used uh, threaded inserts this gives me really a great registration and the repeatability uh, of, of uh, you know my ability to re to be able to repeat these processes time and time again has been you know just really phenomenal. This is the primary jig that I use to machine out the Lakote necks for my guitars. So I'm just, just lining this up with these uh, pre-drilled holes with the threaded inserts and what I'm going to do is uh, uh, you know, uh, bolt this down with some stainless steel bolts. Now I don't tighten these all the way down yet. I want to get them you know, kind of finger tight and then I'll do my final adjustments so that this has very little, if any, well, it shouldn't have any uh, bow or warp in it when I finally tighten it down totally. I'm going to remove this piece. This is a vestige from an earlier process, here, so we no longer need it. So I'm going to insert these little 1 8 inch pins, which are readily available even at a Service Star hardware store, into these two little index holes. And what it's going to do is going to match up with these two index holes on my neck blank. So all we need to do is just line these up. And that's always the fun part is just lining these thing, these two holes up. So now it's there. As you can see it just lifts up. There's nothing holding this down. We're going to turn on some vacuum and now we're going to have this thing ready to go and to hold down for a machining process. We've got this tube which is running out to a vacuum pump and I've got a small shutoff valve here which allows me to take and to control when the vacuum is active and when it's not. And what I'll do is I'll just turn this on here and just give this a tap. And now what I've got is this piece is being held down here nice and firm with just this little bit of vacuum. These particular slots will be used to uh, position the neck uh, during the, the headstock gluing stage. As you can see I've already put in a couple of other holes which are the actual index holes which are used to hold the neck in place on the jig uh, for the actual shaft machining as well. run this 
it's without a dust shroud on it, but uh, uh, if we had the shroud on, you really wouldn't be able to see what's happening. So just for instructional purposes, we're, uh, we're keeping the, 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 the shroud off. Just a word of caution, and it is wear your safety glasses. I almost always wear them. I just happen to forget them, so I'm going to put these on right now for the rest of this process. Okay, the next step here is to create the Marfione V-joint, and this is a V-joint that I've developed uh, for these low coat guitars to make it a little bit easier to put the uh, the headstock and the uh, neck shaft together. We're now moving into the final stage uh, of shaping the neck and uh, essentially we've got the blank, you know, as you can see it's, we've taken off all of the excess material so that this finishing bit will uh, now just be working with a minimal amount of material, you know, in terms of, uh, of actually uh, cutting it, uh, you know, cutting. Um, you just don't want to put a lot of stress on these bits even though the machine and the bit will take it. This is uh, what we ultimately end up with for a, for a blank. Uh, so uh, we'll walk through all of the steps to, to get to this point. I'm always looking for efficiencies. And I felt that uh, working with a CNC machine might really offer me the opportunity to save some time and uh, over time, some money. You know, so I explored a number of different uh, products uh, from a number of different companies and I found that uh, you know, the Laguna machine suited me very well. You know, it was the right price point, the service was uh, excellent, you know, the, sales, uh, the, the, the sales approach was great, uh, and I felt very comfortable right from the beginning. Don't be afraid of the technology and don't think that that's going to necessarily make you any less of a craftsman or uh, that uh, it is in one way or another going to cheapen your product. I think it can only improve them and, uh, 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 and, and I think they can just add so much value to your overall build process. My connection with, uh, with music is, goes back to my teen years, of course. Most of us were in one way or another influenced by the Beatles and the Stones and everyone else under the sun. And so I've been playing guitar uh, off and on, uh, you know, since that time, and also, you know, through the years, have you know, kind of twiddled with them and tweaked them, etc. Uh, had a couple of false starts in trying to actually start building. Uh, it's usually a situation of time and money. You either have all the time and no money, or you've got all the money and no time. But about again, you know, I'm going to say seven, eight years ago, uh, I was able to take in find the time and find the money to actually uh, pursue my dream and now I'm living it. So here we are.